This is Lexus LC500H and every time I see it in the flesh or in the metal, aluminium, plastic, whatever, I'm lost for words. Let's cut to voiceover, shall we? Every year I drive about 60, 70 cars, but only a handful turns other people's heads. I recall people actually stopping to talk about the Rolls-Royce Wraith or BMW i8. As far as Lexus LC500 is concerned, it made men behave like children and women. Let's just say if I got into a fight with my girlfriend on the way to New Year's Eve party, I would not arrive there alone. What makes Lexus such a head turner? This car looks like it's constantly in motion and at the same time as if it was still on someone's drawing board. Huge grille, sharp cuts of headlights, floating roofline, huge wheel arches with 21-inch alloys bulging out of them, air intakes in the back, 3D rear lights, retractable spoiler, diffuser, and fake exhaust tips. You can see two small pipes in each one of them. I'm sorry, but in a 100 plus grand car, this should not happen. Not even in a hybrid. Because Lexus LC500 comes in two variants, a 477 horsepower 5 liter V8 or a 359 horsepower hybrid drivetrain with a 3.5 liter V6 under the bonnet. I can already see smiles being wiped off your faces because, I mean, what's the point of making a Prius GT, right? Well, there is method in this madness, and here's why. Sure, I know there is no replacement for displacement, and I like being pushed into the seat as V8 growls away. I also appreciate comfort, so a V8 with a 10-speed automatic gearbox sounds like a dream come true. 4.7 seconds from 0 to 100 km per hour and just 8 liters per 100 km extra urban. With 82 liters of petrol on board, you can drive from Berlin to Warsaw in one tank and hypermill back to Frankfurt on the other. But this is all just theory. I suppose nobody will be surprised to find out that even LC500H, the hybrid model, uses nothing close to 6 liters per 100 kilometers promised by the manufacturer. It's closer to 9 outside the city. I mean, that's still not too bad for a car, which can do this. LC500H goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 5 seconds, which means you'll get to keep your license a fraction of a second longer. However, when you need to overtake, the drivetrain is so flexible and the car accelerates so fast that I can't show you the cutaways from the Speedo. The last time I felt something like that was in a Porsche Panamera. And when you give it the beams of the line, even in eco mode, traction control light flashes until about 100 km per hour. Theoretically, this car has a CVT, but it's mated with a 4-speed automatic to trick you into thinking it's a 10-speed automatic. And it kind of works. I mean, if you accelerate off the line, it does sound a bit like CVT or an F1 car. However, if you want to overtake at higher speeds, LC500H starts sounding like it had a normal automatic. Interestingly enough, fuel consumption falls around the city. I got close to 9 on a longer journey, but less than 8 around town, which is much closer to 7.2 liters Lexus claims. As long as you don't race from the lights, this car can be very economical. And I suggest you don't race from the lights, because this CVT automatic contraption is not the most effective of the line. It takes ages to turn everything into I would like to drive wantonly mode and then the reaction to the gas pedal is so long that an M3 that was revving next to me a moment ago is now two lengths in front. 
On the plus side, once you turn off all the safety systems, LC500H is one of the few hybrid cars you could drift around the corner, but I suggest you don't, because a two-tone car on slippery surface is tricky enough and CVT doesn't help. As a long-distance cruiser, Lexus LC500H is very comfortable. Suspension copes well, even with rougher roads and even on these 21-inch rims. The car is very well sound insulated from the front, but I can hear some wind noise around the rear intakes and spoiler. This is the top trim version with adaptive steering and all-wheel steering, so the car can be as comfortable or as agile as you need it to be. There is also adaptive cruise control, collision warning, active lane assist, but that beeps so much it spoils all the fun. Also, this touchpad controlled infotainment system and Satnav spoil the fun. Satnav wants to take me back to my New Year's party all the time and I have no clue how to turn it off. I could read the manual, but it's not in the tiniest of glove boxes. It's fascinating how Lexus designers spent time on creating this beautiful interior with door handles which would not look out of place on Dynasty and at the same time used Satnav like from a 2008 Avensis. And this touchpad aiming with it while driving is like playing River Raid. And Satnav is just the tip of an iceberg. If you want to control the heated seats and heated steering wheel, you have to find them somewhere in this menu. Another multi-stage menu is concealed within the gauge cluster. And I find it amusing that the button for deploying the spoiler is next to EV hybrid mode button. Nodes protruding from the instrument cluster shade make it look like Frankenstein's head. Although someone pointed out to me, it could also look like Citroen CX cockpit. I guess it's more interesting than ordinary buttons. Everything here is beautiful, but not necessarily functional. Since I'm not going to be using built-in satnav, I need a place for my smartphone. Cup holder seems like the only sensible place. There is another one here where I will hit every drink with my elbow. Storage under the armrest is relatively large, but access is a two-step job. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm not sure if there is a right way or wrong way of doing it, but whatever. Uh, okay, so let's look in the back and this is this is not just about Lexus, but most GT cars. Why bother with the rear seats at all if they are good enough maybe for a child seat? I'd rather have a parcel shelf, which takes us nicely to the boot. I just need to get out first. Come on. Comedy at its finest. I know. Oh, bloody hell. GT cars are for quick and comfortable medium distance journeys. Warsaw to Salzburg? No problem, I drove there once in a Fiat 500 and I packed it full of luggage and camera gear. On the way back I added a crate of wine. In LC 500 I could barely pack clothes for two people for a New Year's party. With just 172 liters this boot is not much better than in my MX-5. But if you can afford a 100 plus grand car, you can probably also afford someone to bring your luggage in advance or you're going to charge everything on your black credit card. And since you have a black credit card, Lexus LC500H is probably not your only car and you can turn a blind eye to some minor imperfections. Can you? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't, like because why not and hit that bell icon to be up to date with all new videos on my channel. As of 2018 I post on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.